So one of the things COSO highlights and emphasizes is that internal control is a process. It's not something that you put in and you're done with. Controls have to be ongoing and uh, evaluated on an ongoing basis. People play a big role in the internal control environment. It's not just about having all the policies and so forth. It's having the people at every level throughout the organization uh, having an impact on that control and, and more or less walking the talk. It's always important to remember we're looking for reasonable assurance. We aren't aiming for absolute 100% assurance. And that can be tough to remember when a lawsuit pops up, but uh, that's the goal. Uh, it, it would be cost prohibitive to try and control for everything. And so you basically have to consider that when putting controls in place. The whole idea of having a control framework is that individual controls work in harmony with each other and in, in, in conjunction with each other to achieve objectives in overlapping categories. So, so the control objectives for a control a set of controls doesn't just meet uh, one objective. Uh, it can meet them in multiple categories. And the control environment should be adaptable to the structure of the company. All right. So from a, an objective standpoint, we have three categories of objectives. We've got operational objectives. Uh, what's going on in the operations uh, of the organization? How do we safeguard assets? How do we uh, promote efficiency, effectiveness? We have reporting objectives. We want to have appropriate controls over the reporting process so that reporting is reliable and accurate. And then we want to have compliance objectives. So making sure that we adhere to all laws, regulations in the various jurisdictions in which a company operates. So these are the three categories. And you'll see them generally shown as one dimension of the COSO cube, um, which we'll see in just a minute. COSO 2.0 also has five what we call components of internal control. And you can see these in detail in the text. First, there's the control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information and communication, and then monitoring activities. So let's take these in order. The control environment basically is what we'll, you'll often hear called the tone at the top. What is the environment? What uh, approach does management take toward internal controls? How seriously do they take internal controls? So this sets the tone and thus the tone at the top. Influences kind of the consciousness of all employees as far as how seriously they are going to take internal controls. So it gets into the management philosophy, operating style, what are the ethical values of the uh, employees, how is the organization structured to encourage and support ethical behavior, uh, all the way down to compensation schemes and so forth. And as you can imagine, different types of companies are going to have different approaches, different you know, risk appetites, if you will. An app company, for example, may be willing to build and try different things very quickly. Uh, versus a bank, which is generally going to move a lot more cautiously with regard to bringing in new processes and technologies. All right, risk assessment. So here's how a company goes about trying to identify, analyze their risks from the environment. And how is each of these risks or the events that might uh, result uh, going to affect what it is the corporation is trying to achieve. So in order to do that, you're going to take a look at, well, what is the likelihood of this risk being exploited? And then what would be the potential loss if it is? And this is all used to help prioritize controls and also to determine potential losses, estimate uh, losses based on uh, the likelihood of different scenarios. 
All right, so then the company gets into control activities, determining what the policies are, the, the steps that are going to be put into the business processes to uh, ensure control. And this should occur throughout the firm at all levels of the organization, all business functions. Information and communication is the fourth component. And this is basically where, uh, kind of an outcropping, if you will, of the overall uh, control environment. Uh, the company should continually reinforce controls by making sure that control objectives are communicated throughout the organization. Uh, employees have information about them as well as maybe external stakeholders. Monitoring activities, well, here basically is how you put ways to determine whether controls have been breached in place. Management should be able to review what's taken place, uh, what uh, is going on in the business process, and when monitoring activities find something, then the ev evaluation, how do you determine what happened, uh, what kind of deficiencies took place, uh, then you have to have a communication and response approach in place uh, that takes care of things in a timely manner. All right, so that is COSO internal control framework in a nutshell. You'll often see it depicted as a pyramid like this, where you've got the control environment that sets the foundation of the control framework, uh, risk assessment, control activities, and monitoring, and then information and communication sort of being the mortar that holds things together. Now, on the other hand, you've got COSO ERM. And this is another way you'll often see COSO depicted is as a cube like this. Now, COSO ERM, uh, we'll often call that the integrated framework. And you can see in the categories up top, you've got the operations category reporting and compliance that we did for the COSO internal control framework, but we also add a fourth category, strategic. The components from top to bottom now include uh, basically the same five that we had in the internal control framework, but also we had three more. So we'll get into that as well. So if you look at COSO together, you've got the COSO internal control framework, COSO ERM, and fraud deterrence. So your internal control, enterprise risk management, fraud deterrence, those are the three key areas of focus for COSO.